everybody, welcome to Bear Beer Reviews with me, your host Jack, and tonight we have some beers that were kind of given to me in a little swap with uh, Peter the Master of Art Pits when we're out in uh, Denmark. And these are a range of beers that I think are pretty cool, and I've seen a lot of people try, and a lot of people uh, are saying are really interesting. And it's by a brewery that I've never tried anything for, uh, before, before even. This is Bruski, and what we're going to try tonight is the Mango Faber Double IPA. Look at the cool little logo for the Brewski guys, Let's see if the camera focus. Look at him, he's really cute with his little top hat and his monocle and his wonderful moustache. Um, and you can probably tell this is a Mango IPA. I've got double IPA, I should say, uh, clocking in at a nice 8% ABV. Don't know if you can see it, um, it's got bit floating all the way around it. I've just brought it out of the fridge and I'll have wiggled it around in front of the camera. Um, bits floating inside of it. But that not that is not all. We've also got the Pango IPA, uh, which is a blend of uh, passion fruit and mango, I believe, and pineapple as well, is it? Um, unfortunately, they've got the, they've got the importation label right over the description, so I'd have to double check that. But I'm pretty sure it's pineapple, passion fruit, and mango, which is awesome. So it's like a blended one of the um, the kind of Faber beers that they do. And then we've also got the passion fruit Faber IPA. So just the passion fruit IPA, which clocks in a nice seven percent. Um, so I'll, I'll probably try these over a couple of days, so not side by side to see what the comparisons like, because they are all different ABVs. One's double, one's an IPA, and one's the Pango, I think, uh, yeah, Pango's 5.9, um, 7 for the uh, Passion Fruit and 8% for this Mango. So, without further ado, we shall crack this fellow on open. As I say, I've never tried anything from Bruski before, but they're from Helsingborg in Sweden. And uh, this particular fellow, it says on the back in my best Swedish that uh, Amarillo and Mosaic have been added with Mango in the fermentation process. Um, I'm not sure if that's a typo or whether they did um, ferment... ferment Fermentation dry hop, that's the right word for it. So we'll pour this out nice and well. Might as well fill the glass up. Um, as I say, it was kind of hazy in the um, in the bottle anyway, so I wasn't going to stop anything. And as you can see, we've got a nice hazy, um, just about a little level of clarity in there, but nice and hazy, um, kind of bright copper coloured beer going on here with a nice big kind of fluffy head on the top as well. Plenty of carbonation you can probably see inside the glass. Pretty cool looking. Um, let's get in there and give it a good old smell, shall we? Ooh, hoppy. <laughs> yeah, it's got a real dang note going on there. Definitely smell the mosaic in my eyes. It's that kind of, I always say it with mosaic, it's kind of soapy. Um, no, but it's, a lot of people say it's kind of berries. Uh, I get it across as kind of soapy but dank. Oh man, massively, massively hops. There's also kind of level of grapefruit underneath it as well. A little bit of pine coming through. All in all, if you were to smell it, if I forgive it impartially and told to smell it, I would definitely say it was a very heavily hopped IPA. Not entirely getting, perhaps getting mango through just yet, but we'll see. Mmm, smells good. So cheers everyone, let's get in there and give it a try. Mmm. Nice and thick. Some plenty of body in there. Um, good carbonation too. Comes across as ever so slightly more malty than perhaps the aroma. I'm getting a nice solid backbone of of kind of um, sweet digestive biscuits really. And I'm certainly getting a little bit more of the mango through on the palate though. There's a little bit of residual, I won't really say sweetness, but fruitiness that I'm, I'm assuming is this kind of mango note coming through. And then all that mosaic and a nice big dry finish, plenty of bitterness that follows through at the back end as well kind of comes through so you get sweeter malts to begin with, you get a bit of that kind of mango fruitiness and then you get dankness and you get that, that mosaic note come through and, and a big bitterness to kind of finish it all. Uh, it's very crisp but very refreshing actually for an 8%er. Um, it's not as cloying as some double IPAs can get. I don't like that. Um, it's a, a line that gets straddled with higher ABV, hoppier beers. If you're not careful they can get a bit cloying so pretty cool. Yeah, it's really nice, and actually, I'm looking forward to seeing kind of comparisons, ever so slight comparisons with the other two beers that we've got to try, um, and see how they all kind of fit together. A slight anecdote one being that this uh, Pango is pretty turbid, and this Passion is crystal clear, while this double IPA was somewhere in between the two with the little floaty bits in it, which is kind of interesting, see how... Um, the clarity is uh, across across the board, I suppose. I'm guessing they've all bottle conditioned and stuff. But it's a good introduction to the Brewski range. 
Um, they were at CBC, but I, I made a conscious decision not to try these beers until I got home and tried them. Um, but as Peter suggested as well, it's like, yeah, go home and try them from the bottles and see what you think. So, yeah, really tasty beers. And as always, please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you think if you get your hands on some of these Brzezinski beers. Uh, they are indeed very nice so far. So, cheers, everybody.